Today, we're going to be getting a look at the top five early game mistakes that I wish I had not been making. These are things that I now know as a very experienced player of the game that if I were talking to my younger, inexperienced self, I would say, hey, dude, don't do these five things. So stick around in this video for the things you really need to know, and a big thank you to the makers of Dragonair Silent Gods for sponsoring today's video. If you use the link in the description to download the game, it'll support the channel, and you can play on iOS, Android, on PC via Steam or the Epic Game Store, or on your Mac, and there are a few codes that you can use to get some extra goodies. I'll include those in the description of this video. So let's get started on the top five things that I wish I had not done. <laughs> These are mistakes that many people probably make. And let's start with the very first on the list, which is that when you start playing on a new server or you enter into a new season, you will get access to an event that lets you reset one of your heroes for free. You get back all of the experience potions you dumped into those heroes, as well as any crystals you used to star them up. This is something you should use strategically. It is absolutely massive. And once you start to know what you're doing, you can use this to swap from one team to another as you need. So for example, let's say you're starting off in season one, you create a fire and poison team around your traveler. Maybe you're using Horus and Hexandra, but you need to complete the fire domain at higher levels in order to get more crystals to level them up. Well, as you know, you can't use a team with a matching element of the domain that you're going to go fight since they deal less damage and take more damage. Um, in that case, you can actually just reset your current fire lineup and poison team and invest into, let's say, an ice or necrosis team um, with maybe some rares or epics that you've managed to summon. Um, and so what I'm trying to say is you should save your reset to be very strategic. You can use it to switch your team composition from one element to another, and that is very powerful, all right? Now, this event only lasts for seven days. So you can do this constantly uh, whenever you need to uh, sort of do that swap for certain heroes on certain activities. And another case where you might want to use this um, is for building a specific goblin layer team. So the first seven days of the season, you can really kind of take advantage of these swaps. And if you're not doing this, I mean, maybe you're pushing all the content you wanted to push anyways, but if you find you're getting stuck, if you can make the swap and then start to push again, it's totally worth, very valuable. Now, the second mistake, the thing that new players do that they shouldn't do is with your crystals that you use to upgrade. And this is a mistake I made in season one and I avoided in season two. And that is the error of transferring and converting one crystal into another element's crystal. This is because it uses two of the other crystal elements to get to the one element that you needed. So this is a bad rate, right? And the thing is that you are going to need a ton of crystals over the course of your season. A lot of them. I think I, gosh, maybe I'll do some math here in a second around the total amount of crystals you're going to need. But it's a big number, right? So if you need more crystals, just run more domains. That's the answer. Converting crystals, bad plan. So near the end of season one, I had 12 teams. Let's do some math. Um, for the Chaos Shadows Endgame, and I needed a ton of crystal to level them up. So if you were to put it into the numbers, each team having six different heroes, that'd be 72 heroes in total, um, and each needs about 65 of those big purple crystals to get them to five stars. So that's almost 4,700 crystals to get about 12 teams worth of heroes. You are definitely going to need a lot of crystal <laughs> moving into each season. So just avoid wasting them by converting and losing at that sort of two to one ratio. Is it cool that the game gives you a conversion option? Yes. Should you be generally doing a lot of that? No, right? So here and there, maybe generally just run more domains. All right. From there, the third most important thing um, is probably just to be in an active alliance. So the third biggest mistake is to think, oh, this alliance I'm in, it's fine. Mm, if they're not actually active, it's not fine, all right? And this becomes even more important later in the season when there's, I mean, 
gosh, I mean, there's a huge incentive to be in an alliance that's active the entire season. But not only do you get your daily worm arrow from your alliance's collective Vortex scores, but you also get a ton of worm arrow and tickets from alliance events that pop up a few weeks into the season. For example, I have been saving my worm arrow for about a week to two weeks now, maybe, um, not spending it on stamina or dice, and I've already managed to collect 7,000 worm arrow from being completely empty. So just that passive income from being in a good alliance has been crucial. And that, by the way, is including the daily worm arrow I'm getting from the 30-day uh, login pass. Now, later into the season, when the end game starts, and, and you know, this is where being in an active alliance is going to be really crucial. There's going to be alliance-specific buffs that you obtain by getting points, doing elemental domains, chaos shadow bosses, or adventure or preps as an alliance. The more active your alliance, the quicker you're going to get these buffs and be able to score higher and get better seasonal rankings. And while there isn't many group activities, at least yet in Dragonair Silent Gods, there's still a huge benefit to be able to just like discuss and talk about certain hero choices um, and, and battle, you know, through dungeons with the guidance you're getting from your alliance members, all right? So even outside of the reward benefit, just the community aspects of being in a good alliance will really shift your gameplay experience, all right? So this brings us to mistake number four, and this has to do with gear. And gear is very fun, particularly legendary gear. But because legendary gear is harder to obtain, it is a mistake, in my opinion, to just be selling it in bulk. This is because you never really know what you might need or when you might need certain gear pieces or combinations, like, for example, stacking multiple resistance chest pieces in Fey Meander of Season 1 during the boss fights. There are, of course, some exceptions. Like, you can pretty comfortably get rid of any main stat pieces that are base stats, like base hit points or base defense, because their counterparts percent based hit points and percent defense boosts are just much better um, when you're already at the point of, like, farming your legendary gear. But you never really know otherwise kind of like what combinations of things you might need. So try to hold on to as much of your legendary gear as you can. It might be a little bit of a pain to like have a lot of stuff in your inventory, but it can really pay off when you're just digging around and you're like, oh, hey, glad I really held on to that. A few major pieces to look out for would include accuracy, enlightenment, and resistance chess pieces, as well as, of course, crit damage, crit rate, and attack percent on your gloves. Lastly, it's a huge mistake to fall behind on your journal and commission quests. Every day, there's a time gate for journey level, which allows players that are a bit more casual to keep up and only have to commit a small amount of time per day, which makes it even easier to keep up with your server in terms of progression. And your journal has a set of quests that you need to be completing all the way up to step 24. So make sure you are constantly doing whatever is available to be getting as much journey experience as you can. Your commissions also give you a lot of journey experience per day, and they are honestly very easy and very quick to do. So they're not going to take up much of your time. My routine every day has pretty much been do the commissions, do the journal quests if there are any available, do any dungeons um, to spend down my stamina, and then finally do my Vortex last so I can apply any upgrades I've gotten from uh, any of the dungeons, like a better piece of gear, before locking in a Vortex score. Um, specific journey levels unlock certain milestones. For example, on the topic of Vortex, you can unlock Tier 4 Vortex at journey level 35, and if you miss commissions or haven't done some journal quests, you won't be able to do Tier 4 Vortex and will automatically miss out on a bunch of placements in Vortex rankings. So hopefully you avoid these five mistakes that I feel like a bunch of players probably make at least one of these. In fact, if you're brave enough to admit if you've made any of the mistakes uh, that I've listed in this video, drop a comment down below to let me know which one of those mistakes you have made. Um, and alternatively, if there's a mistake I should have included in this video but didn't, there are of course other things that, you know, um, other ways you could you could make a mistake in this game. 
drop a comment down below and let me know what those are so we can all kind of learn from each other in some of the early game new player mistakes. I mean, I kind of alluded to a mistake in this video that I didn't talk about directly, which would be using flat stat hit points and defense, for example, on a chess piece instead of percent-based hit points and defense. Um, so any of those sorts of things, drop a comment down below, especially the less intuitive mistakes that players might make. And a big thank you again to Dragon Air Silent Gods for sponsoring today's video. If you want to download the game, like I mentioned earlier, you can play on iOS, Android, PC via Epic Games or Steam, or on Mac. Check that link in the description. Using that link does support the channel, so I deeply appreciate you're using the link. And I'm hyped for El Elminster Almer, who is coming to the game. It's the next Dungeons & Dragons collaboration on February 23rd. I plan to be covering the release of that new hero into the game. And if you want to see my predictions about what he might do and a little bit of his lore all the card in the end screen alternatively if you want to see the dritsto urden collaboration which happened last year toward the end of the year all the card in the end screen for that one as well i did unlock and work on that legendary and yeah you can learn all about him check that card in the end screen